Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model steel bridge structures in STAD Pro Connect Edition. This training course was designed to go according to the rules of the ASCE 7 AISC Student Steel Bridge Competition. Now the sample bridge model that we're going to construct through this training course may not fully comply with the steel bridge competition rules. And you're gonna to wanna to please refer to your current year's ASCE student steel bridge competition rules for the complete problem statement and specifications. The first thing we're gonna do in this training video is to launch STAD Pro Connect Edition, set up our program configuration, and then create a new model. To start the program, you're gonna find your STAD Pro Connect Edition icon on your desktop and just simply double click. STAD Pro Connect Edition should now be open on your desktop. And the first thing we're gonna do while in the STAD Pro Start screen is to configure the program. Over in the left-hand pane, we're now gonna click on the Configure link, and we're gonna find a few key pieces of information we're gonna to wanna to take a look at. The first piece of information is the base unit configuration. In STAD Pro, the base unit selection dictates the system of units used internally to store numerical values during calculations. It also dictates the default input units and the default system of units that's used to display the results in tables and reports. Now for this training, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the English unit is selected. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is the global access orientation. Now the location of entities in a STAD Pro model is defined with reference to the origin of the global or Cartesian coordinate system. The default orientation of the global coordinate system is that the y-axis points in the vertical direction and a plan view is represented by the x and z plane. Now you do have an option to specify the vertical axis as the z-axis, but this option will eliminate the ability to use some other function of the program, such as the wind load generator. So we're gonna make sure that our vertical axis is set to the default position, which means that the y-axis should be vertical. Once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. We are now ready to create a new model over in the left-hand pane on your screen, you're now gonna click on the new option and you're going to start by naming your structure. We'll go ahead and call our members one. You can also locate this model anywhere that you have read write privileges to. I'm just gonna locate mine on my desktop. After that, you need to select which type of model that you wanna choose. We're gonna be creating an analytical model today. This option is used to model your structure using analytical elements. The analytical model is a finite element model of the structure, which is typically processed directly by the analysis and design engines. We do also, in addition to that, have a newer option in STAD Pro Connect Edition, which is to use a physical model workflow. This would be used to model your structure in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler using physical members. The physical model is used to draw structural elements as they are physically constructed. The program will then decompose this into an analytical model and pass to the STAD Pro analysis and design engine when you run your model. For today's training, we're gonna go with an analytical model and we're also gonna be using the English unit system. Once we've entered all of our model information, we're gonna click on the create icon to create the model, which will pass us directly into the STAD Pro graphical user interface. Now, before we start modeling our bridge structure in STAD Pro Connect Edition, let's first discuss a few key areas in the STAD Pro graphical user interface. At the top of your screen, you're gonna find your quick access toolbar. Now, this will contain commonly used tools such as save your model or open a new model. Below that, we're gonna find our ribbon toolbar. Now this will provide access to the STAD Pro modeling analysis and design commands. And we're gonna kind of walk our way through a few of these different tabs during this training course. 
Now the first tab within the ribbon toolbar is also the file tab. Now this contains your file management tools and your program configuration. In the center of your screen, you're gonna see the view window. Now this will display the graphical representation of the model and any other display options that you have set. Above that, we have our workflow page control area. And from here, you can select the page for the current workflow. At the left-hand side of your screen, you're gonna find your workflow panel area. And from here, you can select the current model workflow. For today's training for the modeling portion, we're gonna be staying within the analytical modeling workflow area. Over at the right-hand side of your screen, you're gonna find your data area. Now this will contain tables and page dialogues and the model status. And as we work our way through our workflow today, we're gonna to see different tables available in the data area, which we're gonna utilize. Finally, at the bottom of the screen, you're gonna find your status bar. Now this will present useful information regarding the status of the program. It also displays pertinent information for the current page, such as hints for using the current command, current program operation mode, your cursor position, and your current input units. Now the organization of the tabs in the workflow page control area from left to right represents a logical sequence of operations in STAD Pro. Generally is recommended to progress through the tabs from left to right to enter all of the data that is relevant for your project. We are now ready to start creating our model geometry. Now we have several different tools available through STAD Pro and you're most likely going to be using several of these tools in combination with each other to achieve your goal. We're gonna experience several different tools that you can use throughout the lifespan of any project that you create in STAD Pro. The first tool we're gonna to take a look at is the Structure Wizard. Now the Structure Wizard is used to parametrically generate a structural model, which can then be merged with the current structure in STAD Pro. To access the Structure Wizard, I'm gonna to go to the Geometry tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the Structure Wizard icon. Now within the Structure Wizard, STAD Pro comes with several different prototype style models. And we could take a look at the different types of models we have available to ourselves. I'm gonna start this model by selecting a trust model. And then I'm gonna find the trust that best looks like what I'm trying to create. And for my particular model, I'm gonna start by creating a lattice truss. To start this process, I'm gonna double click on whichever template I want and then I'm gonna enter in some parameters. I'm gonna enter the length of my truss, and this is gonna be your overall length of your structure. I'm gonna enter the height of my truss and the width. Now, for this particular model, I'm gonna start by creating just one truss, so I'm gonna enter a width of zero feet. Now, the number of bays along the length, I'm gonna enter as 26, and along the width is zero. Now by entering a quantity into the number of bays fields, this is going to make each bay equally spaced. If you would like to customize the spacing of each individual bay, you're gonna to want to go ahead and click on these browse buttons. And here you could see it's equally spaced all of them. And of course the total is gonna equal the overall length of my truss and I can specify each bay individually if I needed to. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK, and then we'll click Apply. Now, before we send this model over to STAD Pro, we can kind of take a look at it. Uh, if I hold down my, if I roll with my middle mouse button, I can kind of zoom in and out. I can also hold down my left mouse button to kind of pan around. Now, after reviewing my model, I may decide I wanna change some parameters. Say, for example, I wanna change the number of bays. I can just double click in this main window, which will bring me right back to the area I was and allow me an opportunity to make any changes. Now, if I'm satisfied with my structural geometry and the structure wizard, I then wanna send it over to STAD Pro. So as you can see right now, I'm still in the structure wizard. Nothing's in my STAD Pro model yet. To send it over to STAD Pro, I'm gonna to go to the menu bar item, select File, and then Merge Model with STAD Pro. Now you can use the Structure Wizard at any point through your modeling process, either like we did to create a new model, 
or once you already have um, some model geometry. And that being said, you can select an insertion point, which this is going to be especially useful if you already have a little bit of structural geometry created in your model. You're going to want to be able to tell it where this prototype goes. I'm going to enter mine at 000, which basically means the bottom left-hand node is going to be at 000, and everything's going to be built up from there. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. And now you can see very quickly how I was able to get some structural geometry into STAD Pro. Now that we're in this area, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what we have before we move on. Now, what you're going to notice is in the workflow page control area, I do have the geometry tab selected. And when this tab is selected, my data area is going to show my node numbers and my beam numbers. Again, you're going to notice the nodal coordinates for each of these um, nodes in the model. Again, the Y being your vertical axis. And then in the beams table, you're going to notice that each member runs from one node to the next. So we start, say, for member number one. We're going to start at node number one, and it goes to node number two. And all of this is populated automatically for you through the structure wizard. Now, before we proceed and model any other structural geometry, let's first also take a look at our graphical user interface and take a look at some of the other tools that you're going to need throughout the rest of this training. Now, the first tools I'm going to show you is how to select different objects within STAD Pro, as this will be necessary when you proceed on to do some of your modeling steps or assigning properties or specifications. In my ribbon toolbar, I'm now going to select my select tab, and I can see that I have all different types of cursors and different selection tools. Now, typically your beams cursor is active by default. And if you weren't sure, you can always go ahead and select it from the select area. Now, with your beams cursor active, you can go ahead and select objects on your screen. I can do a single click on any type of object with my left mouse button to select one item at a time. Or I can also draw a fence around a series of objects, which means that anything within that fence will be selected. If I want to select multiple objects at one time, I can hold down my control key on my toolbar and then keep drawing a fence. I can use this to select and unselect. I'm holding down the control key the entire time. I may also find it necessary to maybe select other types of objects. So here I can select my nodes cursor. You can see that the graphic of the cursor changes slightly and I can select nodes. What you're also going to notice is that these are also selected in the data area. And if I wanted to, I could also use the data area to select different items, and they'll turn in red once you have them selected. Let's return now to our beams cursor. Now I can also use several of these other tools to select other types of objects. Like say, for example, I want to select all of my beam members that are parallel to my global X axis. I can come up within my beams tools. I can select parallel to the X and then it'll automatically detect what elements are parallel to the x-axis and go ahead and select them. Now several of these tools we're going to want to go ahead and use throughout the rest of this training, so it's a good idea to maybe play around with them at this point just to get comfortable with them. The next thing we're going to take a look at is how to change your input units. So I'm going to go to the geometry tab in my ribbon and I'm going to find this icon here within the structure tools. This is my current input units. Now when we set up our file, we told it we wanted to use the English unit system. And you can see here that I can change between different types of units, depending upon what I want to enter and what will make it easier for me. So you can see my default right now is selected to feet. You can see everything in my nodes table is indicating feet. I can also take a look at my status bar at the bottom of the screen. I can see what my current input units are. But say, for example, I would prefer to enter something in inches rather than feet. So I'm going to select inches and then click apply. And you see here it was automatically converting all of those options for me. And it may be nice to be able to switch back and forth with those. So you should get comfortable with this area. The last thing we're going to take a look at before modeling our structural geometry is how to view our structure. So in the ribbon toolbar, we'll now select the view tab in the ribbon. 
And then we could select different views here. Right now, we're just taking a look at our default isometric view. We can always see where we are in space using the global axis tripod in the lower left-hand corner. There may be times where it might be easier to maybe take a look at an elevation of the view um, or a side view, for example. So you're able to kind of manipulate your model. I can also hold down my right mouse button and kind of rotate it around. My middle mouse wheel will zoom in and out. If I want to reset my view, I could just come right back to the isometric view. I may also want to be able to turn on and off different label settings, for example. So to do that, I can click on this label settings icon, and you can see all the different types of items I can turn on and off. So for this model, maybe I want to turn my node numbers on, for example. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And then all of my node numbers will be turned on. So here, if I selected, say, for example, node 54, it's going to select it. That's node number 54. If I want to turn that back off, I could just go back to the same exact area, click on my node numbers, and then click OK. Once you're done, you can go ahead and click OK. And then you can see that with just that starting two-dimensional truss, I was able to very quickly create my three-dimensional bridge structure. This video is part of the Modeling Steel Bridge Structures video series. A link to the series playlist is available here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.